Someone asked me, they said, Dr. Shaw, do you hate being a pharmacy manager the most? And being a pharmacy manager wasn't the worst thing I did. The thing I hated the most was being a floater. Oh man, there is nothing worse than being a floater pharmacist. At least for me it was. Because they always had me go to terrible stores, man. I remember every time I'd come in in the morning, there'd be like eight screenshots stapled together with shit circled on every page with arrows pointing to the circles. I'm flipping through it like, what the hell is this, a treasure map? Look, unless this is the map that tells me how to get the hell out of retail pharmacy, I'm not reading this. You come in the morning, they couldn't find a prescription last night. So the, so the pharmacist uh, the night before took like six prescription pads and wrote an essay on each and stapled it together. I'm trying to read that like a damn murder mystery. It's too much. I hate coming into those notes. I, I eventually developed a policy where if you can't effectively explain to me what's wrong with the prescription in 20 words or less, I don't even read it. I don't. Before I even read what it says, I do a word count, like Microsoft Word. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, Okay, put it to the side. <laughs> if it's over 20 words, it, it ain't for me. Send that to corporate, send it to the pharmacy manager. I'm not reading nothing over 20 words. Don't nobody got no time for that? You know, when you come into pharmacy, you gotta log in. You got to do temperatures, you got to do counts, you got to check the email, you got to make calls. Ain't nobody got time to be trying to figure out what somebody else wrote the night before. That's how you get behind. Shoot. I used to hate those long ass notes. Then I used to hate closing at night. Because either when you close, either you were working by yourself because somebody called off and they don't even tell you. Or when you're working at night, they give you the worst text or somebody brand new. Either way, it was going to be terrible. And I can always tell when I walked in the pharmacy if I was working by myself because I'd come in and say hello and won't nobody make eye contact. You'd be like, hey, how's it going? They'd be like... That's why I started to get wise. When I used to float, first thing I did when I walked in, I walked in, I walked to every technician I saw, I looked them in the eye. What time you leaving? Four o'clock, okay. What time you leaving? Six o'clock, okay. What time you leaving? Eight? Okay, who's with me from eight to 10? Oh, you don't have nobody? Okay, we, we closing at eight o'clock today. They be like, oh, we can call and try to find somebody. No, nah, y'all should have been did that. It's 2 o'clock. You should have tried to find somebody early in the day. Forget it. We closing at 8. The pharmacist ahead of me that day, she's like, well, it's not that bad from 8 to 10. Okay, well, at 8 o'clock, you come back and you work from 8 to 10 by yourself and I go home. Oh, you don't want to do that? Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. I used to hate floating too because you sometimes you'd come in and when I first started there used to be like an hour overlap. They didn't got rid of the overlap now in retail pharmacy. And if there is an hour overlap, somebody at corporate made a mistake and did that on accident. But when I first started working retail, man, it used to be like an hour overlap. Where it was you and another pharmacist and uh, sometimes you come in, the pharmacist just doesn't say nothing to you. I remember one time I came and I said hello to the pharmacist. She just put her hand up, didn't say hello back. I said, how's your day going? She just went over to start filling. So at three o'clock, uh, I came in at two, it was three o'clock. She's like, okay, my shift is over. Um, I just have a couple problems to give you. No, don't give me that. I've been here for an hour. You ain't said a word to me. You can't say hello. I don't care what them problems are. You leave that over there for the for the people in the morning. Anti-social overlapping pharmacists, man. I don't want to hear nothing about them problems. Just just leave them over there. They're gonna stay right there. 
till you come back tomorrow to open since you don't want to say nothing to nobody. Oh man. I hate when you was closing, man. They give you one of those technicians that know nothing because they're brand new. And it's hard because it's not their fault, right? In retail pharmacy, they just don't have time to train people. So they stick you with this technician that don't know nothing. I remember one time I was working with this tech. I was in drive through I said, hey, uh, where do you guys keep the extra bags? I don't know. I'm trying to find the antibiotic. I said, hey, where's the uh, reconstitution meds? I don't know. Hey, where's your flavoring? I don't know. I'm like, hey, how about you tell me what the hell you do know and we'll, we'll work backwards. How about that? Walking back and forth in the pharmacy. Talk about she don't know. Finally, I got so tired. I said, do you, do you know how to get home? You do? Okay. How about you do that? And I just work by myself because... Or sometimes they're brand new, you get them those technicians that just keep asking you questions. Man, I swear I had this one technician, she just kept asking me question after question after question. And there was just so much going on. I, I, I couldn't take it. I'm trying to type. I'm trying to feel. I'm trying to answer questions. I'm answering the phones. She just asked me question after question. Finally, I found some scotch tape. And I put some tape down. I told her, I said, look, don't you cross that line the rest of the day, okay? From 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock, do not walk past that line. I don't care if you got a question or not. You write it down. You ask them in the morning. Got time for all these questions. I think the worst type of technician I hate working with are those techs that need your help, but they don't say nothing. They just stare at you. I remember one time I had to close with this technician. I'm on the phone, and I'm waiting for the... Uh, the other pharmacy to uh, take me off a hold. So while I'm doing that, I'm typing, I'm holding the phone, I just look over and she's just staring at me. So I keep typing, I type a few more prescriptions, she's still staring at me. I say, can I help you? She's like, oh, I have a question, but I can wait, I, can see, I see that you're busy. No, you cannot wait, we already got enough waiters, okay? I don't need another waiter, come on. You gotta talk to me. I remember it was 9 o'clock and we still had 50 prescriptions to fill. And I'm filling, I'm filling. And I could just feel somebody was just staring at me, you know? So I turn around and it's this technician. I said, girl, how long you been standing there? She's like, about five minutes. I said, you been standing there for five minutes and didn't say nothing? She goes, well, I see that you're busy filling. You can keep filling and I can ask you the question when you're done. Girl, this is retail pharmacy. We don't ever get done filling. There's always going to be something to fill. I wish you would say something, Helen Keller. Walk around the pharmacy like Helen Keller. I said, come on, go, go take your non-talking self over there. All right, y'all, that's what I got. That's what I'm working on. Like I said, since there's no open mics, I can't work on it in the comedy club. So I'm going to work on it with you guys. Tell me what you thought, if you liked it. If you didn't like it, that's fine too. Alright, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and please share.